Now let's take a look at modifying members of an array. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to change this string here. So what I could do is we can type in array and then we have the brackets and the number that's returned is a now going to be a memory pointer. And if I hit return, it returns the string. If I'd like to assign a new string, I can use the assignment operator and say new string. And you'll notice now when I open up my array, it says new string. And also don't forget you have your other assignment operators as well. So now I've refreshed the page. So array zero is going to be the string. And then I can say plus equals, and then you have concat. And you have all of these other assignment operators that you can use for strings and integers. And if I take a look at array, you'll notice it concatenated string and concat together, and it gave us string concat. So that is assignment in arrays. Now also what we'd like to do is be very, very careful when using the bracket syntax because an array is treated as an object. So what you could do is say array and then you could say, right, I want to create a new element. Well, that's fine if we know how many elements there are. This is zero, one, two, three, and this is the one with the four as the memory pointer, this function. However, if I want to create a new one, then you could say five and then you could assign a new string value. If I hit return, I can now type in array and now you'll notice that I do have five and it does say new string, but you need to be very, very careful when using the brackets. So if I was to say array and let's say I didn't know how many there were, so I guessed and I said 20. Well, don't forget there is now five elements because I created a new one saying new string. So now I'm saying array 20. So here it is, I hit return. Now let's take a look at my array. You'll notice right here it says after new string, what we did was we created 14 undefined or null elements. They're just nullified elements, meaning they're empty, they're pretty void and useless. For example, what we did was we created null 14 times like this. And then after the 14, we actually have the value 2020. And even though when I open this up, you'll see zero all the way to five and then 20, it's just because these guys are null or undefined, they're still there like I wrote it out like this. They are still there in memory, these values, but it just shows us 20 because it's not null or undefined. So we have 14 undefined or null elements in our array and then we've got 2020. So you can see how using the bracket syntax is not very good for arrays. Also, you have to be very, very careful again with the bracket syntax because what you could also do is not even use a number. You could actually assign a string like this, test, and that can be equal to test like so. And you're probably going, well, that's not going to be very good because it's no longer a list type object where we've got numbers for each one of our elements. And also you could do the same thing with the dot syntax because again, arrays are objects. So you need to be very careful how you modify them. So let's do test two and test two. So you can either use the dot syntax. Now we're using this regular symbol name or you could do it with the brackets with a string. Be very, very careful what you do because now when I take a look at array, you'll notice that this object now has test and test two. Now, why is this really bad for arrays? Well, arrays are supposed to be enumerable. Enumerable means countable. So if I had, let's say five, five pound coins in front of me, I can count one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, and so forth. I know what the next number is going to be countable, but you can't count test and test two. It's not obvious what they will be. So this array object as a list, it's supposed to be enumerable that we can iterate over, meaning go one by one by one and count over them. But now we've ruined it because we have test and test two. So be very careful how you modify your arrays. Now also there's something very interesting to note and I'm just going to refresh and get rid of this. You will notice that when I create an array and I assign these elements, we also have this property here. Now this property is a computed property. In other words, this value is dynamically assigned. Whenever we modify this array, it will change the length property. The length property tells us how many elements are in the array. So we can see we've got one, 
two, three, four, and five elements in the array. Now, the first element has the index of zero, but it's still classed as an element. We've got five elements in this array. So it lets us know how many values are stored within. And if I was to modify it, so array five equals, and then we can say new value. Now let's take a look at array again. We now have five and you'll see the length is six because now we have the index of five, but don't forget it started at zero. If you wanna know the length, it's actually six because this now starts at one, then two, then three, four, five, and six. So there are six elements in this array now. And the way you actually pull out this property is you say array.length. And when you say array.length, it returns the length of the array, how many elements are stored within this object. So how are we actually supposed to modify an array? Well, if I pull up the array, and then I also see a underscore underscore proto, and this is the prototype object, and I will talk more about prototype later, but the actual JavaScript language created this for us automatically. When we create an array, it attaches another object onto it, and it's called a prototype object, which we'll talk about later. But it comes with all of these different methods, and these methods allow us to iterate over values, it allows us to filter data inside of it, it allows us to change and modify data in our array. So this is all defined by JavaScript, the language itself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start using some of these pre-built methods that I can run on this array object to modify it and change it. So let's go ahead and just get rid of that. Let's say I want to get rid of the first element in the array. That's dead easy. Just type in array.shift. And what this will do is it will shift everything up one. So let's go ahead and hit return. And what this method does, it doesn't take any values. You just run it with the parentheses and it just returns what it deleted. It deleted this element out of the array. And now when we take a look at array, you'll notice it says 100. So it starts with 100 right here. Now also what we can do is pop things off the end of the array. So this is the last value now. Let's sync this up. So we have new value. And what we want to do is we want to pop that off the end of the array. So I'm gonna say array.pop. Again, it doesn't take any arguments, which is values. You just run the pop method and it tells you what element, what member it deleted. Well, it deleted this member and it just told us what it deleted by returning it. And then I can say array. And there we go. We start with 100 and we end with the subroutine, with the function, just like we have here. So that is how you take off the first element with shift and take off the last element with pop. Now also we can add new elements to the beginning of the array using the unshift method. So we say array unshift and unshift actually takes the values. These arguments that we're passing in will be elements inserted into the array. So we could have a string. You can actually pass in as many as you would like. You can just keep going with this as many as you would like, but you can have numbers. You can have floating point numbers. You can even have, let's say functions. Don't forget. And you could also have an object and you can even have an array. So we're putting in all these different types. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six elements that we are inserting into our array. So now you'll notice it returns the length of the array. If I take a look at my array now, my array is considerably longer and you'll see that the length is now 10. And what it did was it started here at the zero position, and then it inserted all of those values right at the beginning. And you'll notice that it kept everything in sync. So if I go ahead and return this now, you'll see that all of these numbers are correct. They're all in sync and they all work. And there is our first value set that we have here. We put in an, an array, we put in an object, 
we have a subroutine that we defined, then we have the floating point number and the integer as well, and also the string. So that is actually how you do it. And again, you don't have to have that many things. You could just say unshift, just have one if you really wanted to. It depends on how many things you want to insert into the array. So if I say insert, now it's 11, take a look at array. Now we have insert right at the beginning and everything stays in sync. So unshift is to add elements at the beginning of the array. To add things to the end of the array, we use push. We can now say array.push and we can start pushing in values. And again, you can have as many values as you like. Separate each argument, each value out with a comma, don't forget, because we're running a function. So I could say 200, 300, and again, you could have an array, you could have strings, you could have objects, you could have subroutines and so forth. So say array.push and what it will do is it will return the length and now we have 14 elements in our array. What it did was it went right to the end here and then it pasted this in. So now we have these elements as well in our array. And if I take a look at this, you'll be able to see that is exactly what it did. 200, 300 and string at the end. So that's what push is there for. You can just add in one value or you could just keep going with as many values as you'd like to push in. Now also, this may not be enough because let's say if I wanted to, let's say, add in values in between, instead of going right to the start or right to the end, I might want to go in the middle somewhere. How do I now do this in JavaScript? Well, you use the splice method. And with the splice method, you can do anything within the array. So first of all, I'm gonna target my array and then I'm going to call the splice method and invoke it. And the first thing we need to do is say, what position do we want to start with? Well, I wanna start right here and delete out this array and also delete out this object. So we start here. So we go zero, one, two. This is where I want to begin. And don't forget it's zero indexed. So I'm gonna say two, and then you define how many elements you want to delete. If I didn't want to delete any elements, you can leave it at zero, but I want to delete this element, one, and this element, two. So I want to delete two elements from my array, and that will do it. So hit return, and it tells you what you deleted, it returns an array of what was deleted. It deleted the array with two elements, embed and 200, so it deleted that one. And then also it deleted the object as well, this one. And now if I take a look at array, you'll see it has string 100 and the function, just like we have here. Now let's say that I wanted to add in elements in the array. Let's say I wanna start here this time and I want to add in elements. How do I do that? Well, you use the splice method again, and again, it's point and delete, but this time I don't wanna delete anything. So I wanna first of all, take a look at my memory point. You go zero, one, I wanna start here. So that's where I want to start. Then do I want to delete any elements? No, so I say zero. Then you can add in as many values as you'd like, just like unshift or push you can add in as many values. So it's point, delete, and then values. So I can necessarily say, hello, and then I can say world, and then I can add in a number, an object, an array, a function, whatever you want it to be. And there we go. And I can just keep going in this fashion, but I'll leave it with these three. I'll copy that out. And now you'll notice it returned an empty array. That's because we didn't delete any elements from our array. So it's just telling us, sorry, we didn't delete anything. And now when I take a look at my array, you'll notice it added it in. It went here. It started here and we didn't delete it. We moved it down and we added in these three values then you have 100 and then you have function and that's exactly what it did. You point, then you say you want to delete and then you can also add in new values and you can also replace as well with the same technique. So for example, let's say I want to replace string and hello or even world and 200. Let's make it a bit more complicated. So 
again, what we do with array.splice, the first thing we do is where do we need to go? Well, we need to go here. This is where I need to start. So 0, 1, and 2. I need to start at position 2. I want to delete because I want to replace these two. So I want to delete world and 200. And I can say delete those two elements. And then I can replace them with either one element. So I could say world 200. Or I could keep adding in as many values as I'd like. So let's just replace these two with just this string. So let's go ahead and hit return. It told us what it deleted. It deleted world and 200. And then what it did was it placed in this value into our array. So now it says world 200. And if we take a look at array, there it is, world 200. So the splice method is very powerful and it lets you modify the array in a such a way that you can delete any particular amount of elements. It allows you to place in new elements as well at any point or position.